On behalf of Teen Tiger TV, I'd like to thank the Therapy Twins, Joan and Jane, for joining us tonight. Thank you. We are so glad to be here. And today we're going to be talking <clears throat> about can you be the driver of your own choices? And we are former therapists. We are retired and we wrote a book and we came out with our own mental illness. So we are probably going to be speaking from our own experiences, our own experiences. on that topic. And um, I'm looking forward to it, Joan. Yes, me too. All right, so let's roll the clip. One of the goals of Teen Tiger TV is to interview informative and entertaining people, and the Therapy Twins are both. We are impressed that they speak from experience and appreciate their willingness to join us tonight. I heard our brains are not fully formed until age 25. So when can we start making choices? When is being grown up? Using my story, is that like deciding what I want to be when I grow up? Or deciding if I go to college? Or taking care of a pet. Is it being open to new experiences? Choosing my story like choosing what I like to do. Or knowing what I don't like to do. When I see pictures of me, I see my story. I think my story starts from my family when I was born. Other people have taken those pictures and not me. Is that my story? I think of driving, I think of cars. Learning to drive happens with tests or observing an adult and practicing. I agree. Practicing helps me learn. Wonder. Those were all such wonderful statements. I, I can only remember a couple of them off the top of my head, but somebody said, um, is it about new experiences? And I just want to start with a lot of the answers are yes to a lot of different things, but everybody, you're all going to go at your own pace. But new experiences, as stressful as they are, try to get some, you know, without experience. We have nothing really much to talk about. We don't form relationships. We're not that good at our jobs, et cetera, et cetera. So what do you think, Joan? Did you live? Well, I want to. I want to say it, the answer is yes. You can be. We're we're not talking exactly about getting in a vehicle and driving your life. What I'm talk we are talking about is you can start at any age. You are a an adult at age apparently 18, but what we're talking about is at any age you can start changing your story if you'd like to. So for me. I did not graduate college until I was 35 years old. But prior to that, I had goals. So I would repeat a lot of uh, often to myself, I, now this is going to sound weird, I graduated college, even when I did not. So those are the things you do all by yourself. You write these things down. These are your goals. But say it like this, I you know, I have education, I graduated. And if you don't like saying it, yeah. you write it on a piece of paper and you put it in your bedroom or your bathroom Will you when you will see it every day or somewhere you like to be, wherever you like to be, you, you wanna see this because when you see your goals or repeat your goals out loud, your brain hears it. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you begin to do things. We, we joked and said, you begin to drive for your own choices yeah. in your own life. But we all have parents. And when we're younger, we actually have to listen mm -hmm. to our parents or guardians. So what you do on your own is you write down or speak what you would like to have, but you start saying it like, I am. And, you know, Joan brings up a wonderful point, but um, I suffered from... I want to call it mild depression for quite a long time in my life. Um, I did have a little major, but let's talk about the minor. My minor depression, it made me super shy and very, um, I didn't know who I was, what I was. I mean, if anyone asked me a question, I was blank. So, so somebody earlier said something about observing others. Yes. And what I did a lot of, was observing in school, at home, at picnics, at uh, even at the movies, anywhere I could. And what I did 
was I paid attention to the style or the behavior that uh, was appealing to me. But then another one of you said the brain isn't fully formed until 25 and other scientists might, might argue even later than that. So I'm still defining myself as a grown up. I'm over the age of 60 hmm. and I'm still defining myself because I woke up in terms of, of the uh, treatment for my depression a little bit later in life. And that doesn't mean I didn't do things. I did things. I, um, I got my driver's license when the, the law said I could get it. I went to college not knowing what I wanted to be. I chose nursing, but I didn't really think I liked it. Joan could tell you how many majors she switched. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Well, I'm a twin, so I did follow my older twin, mm -hmm. which is Jean. But I, what, there is no wasting time yes. with courses that aren't toward your major. I took so many different classes to find out what I was interested because in. Because part of your first year in college, and nobody has to go to college. Nope. You, it would be great if we could all go to college. But you guys are young. You could be deciding things on your own. I like to say to people, what worked for me was simple choices. Because if somebody said to me right now, Jane, if you had to do it all over again and you had no depression at all, what do you think you would want to do for a living? You know, and I can come up with 10 different things that I might, might like, but I just had no knowing. I didn't know myself. So observing people was wonderful, but also starting slowly, like very, slow. very slowly, like ordering my tea at the restaurant. Did I want lemon? Did I want milk, sugar, etc.? And I would practice. And I'll tell you, I drink my coffee almost every way you can imagine someone ordering coffee. And years later, I've decided how I take my drink. So that's like me. And being a grown up was really difficult because I um, also with my depression had ADHD. What's that? Attention deficit disorder. And so it was very, very difficult to say, clean my room. And then as I got older, clean a house or an apartment. And all I'd like to say is don't set yourself up for failure. For all of these choices in life and these activities that we're choosing, you just try something new. Pay attention to it. Did you like it? Did you not? Or was it like a hmm, maybe? And you go with maybes and the things you like and just try things out. Um, I was so anxious uh, growing up that I couldn't even... I couldn't even talk actually to mm -hmm. people. I'm a, I, and Jane being the older twin, she would talk. It, my Very anxiety, little. And I talked by observing others. Things. My anxiety was so bad. I stopped driving. Even though I had a driver's license, I was frightened to death to get in the car and drive. So what Jane did, I wouldn't recommend. And I wouldn't recommend it either. But she stopped the car on the, you know, went off to the side of the road to the breakdown lane. And she said, if you want to see mommy and daddy, you have to drive home. And we were about an hour away from where we lived. Now, I would not recommend that because what happened was I was sweating. I was tremulous. And you can get into an accident if you're that frightened. But what I started to do was I asked Jane if she would come with me to short, short distances. So she helped me to start to drive. And you would be amazed. Even when you make a bunch of mistakes, you start to become comfortable because you made so many mistakes. You start to learn a mm -hmm. new way. And I want to say mistakes are a wonderful learning experience. And also acting. When somebody's an actor, they said to me once, you realize acting is just practicing practicing new ways of doing things because they're playing a part that helped me understand how to change my life, how to be the driver of my own choices. I had to start performing habits. So I did little things. Even if I was very anxious, I used to say things like this to myself, you know, out loud though, or write it down. I am well adjusted. Mm -hmm. I am calm. I feel wonderful. But what happens when you start saying things like this, your mind starts to take in knowledge from other areas. So I kept talking about my uh, calmness 
and I ended up reading that if you um oh I lost my train of thought. I read that's something. okay because one of some of the stuff Joan is referring to, like in our day. I'm sorry. Um, I knew a gentleman who wanted a particular car. Yeah. And he couldn't afford it. Yeah. But he got a picture. Now, nowadays, everything is on the computer. We're from days where you would cut a picture out of a magazine. And what the gentleman did was he p- took a picture of the vehicle that he wanted to buy in the future. Mm-hmm. And he taped it to his bathroom mirror. Some place where, like Joan said, where you look every day, yes. you know, your bedside, et cetera. And through this visualization... A few years later, he got the car he wanted. So there's many techniques to kind of get what you want. But I think the question is about when am I a grown up? And I'm going to tell you, I am one, I guess, because I pay my bills and I took care of my child and et cetera, et cetera. I had held a job, et cetera. But I still don't feel like I'm a full grown up because in my personal life, there's so many things I want to do or experiment with because of the past depression that held me back from likes and dislikes. Because one of the things that frightened me terribly was uh, to go to a party with other people Mm -hmm. that knew, say, who they were. Um, That's a question I, I just... I was so nervous that what, what am I? I just was a nurse, but didn't like nursing. Cause then of course they said, Oh, you must love nursing. Well, I didn't. So all I did was try to do the observing of others to find what I might like. And then I took that step to say, take an art class or read the magazine, that article, or go outside and try to hit a ball with a baseball, see how you are yes. at it. And if you sort of like it, practice. It's the only way to get good at something, including being a grown-up. And the more I either read or watched certain movies that I enjoyed or took classes, I found that the more I learned, the more I felt comfortable being in a room with others. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, like Jane, I would feel like, oh, no, now I'm in, I'm going to worry All I did was worry. What am I going to say? Will people like me? Will they think, will they think that I'm odd because I used to have seizures and I suffered um, from a brain tumor that caused the seizures. And now I do not know because I was never diagnosed with a learning disability, but I have often Mm -hmm. been embarrassed for some of the things I have either done or said, for instance, even in college, my master's degree, I was um, writing notes. And out of the blue, it's like a a little movement I have. It doesn't come often. (laughs) But out of the blue, my pencil was on the other side of the room. And, you know, I have to get up and, and in front of the class and go get the pencil. So it was embarrassing. But boy, once I said, oh, I used to suffer seizures and I think there's a little bit left (laughs) over, people didn't say anything to Mm. me about that. I wonder what's my excuse, because I think we do have learning disabilities. Yeah, no one diagnosed that. Yeah, they didn't diagnose back then unless you were really, you know, interrupting the class. But I'm sorry, but what I want to say is sometimes the the reason I found out who I was was I spent a lot of time alone. When Jane got married, I was very depressed because that's my best friend and that was my other half. And I felt Jane was smarter than I was. So when she got married, I was very, very sad. So what I did was I started picking out different styles of movies and I come to find out I really like comedies, but I also like a real good mystery where I have to figure out what's going on. And then I branched out. I started watching foreign films where I had to read the subtitles. And because of the trauma that I had suffered as a child and then later as an adult, I had a lot of symptoms of of a traumatic experience, which isn't the greatest thing when you're in a group of with a group of people, because I might have done something like this. Oh, like I didn't even I didn't know somebody. I don't know. I, I wasn't treated. So. Because of the trauma, what I saw in a movie that helped me so much, 
the grandmother said to her grandson, who was crying about the trauma he had just gone through, he said, I, I am so embarrassed. I don't even want to go back to school. And what she said to him, it, it broke my heart, but I have carried it my whole life. What she said was trauma can be a gift. Now I got very, what? What does she mean mm -hmm. by that? I thought it was all terrible things I went through. She said, it's a gift because now I can recognize if somebody is startled yes. easily or stuttering. I also used to stutter when I spoke. I do recognize that in other people. And you know what she said? That if you recognize the hurt in others, you can now help somebody else. And the number one way to get out of your anxiety and get out of your sadness is help another person. And that's what I started to do. I help a lot of people. And now I feel like I'm less anxious. I feel that with all my mistakes, I learned a lot. And now every single day I try to do more, you know, a little bit more than uh -huh. yesterday. Oh, the other important thing I learned, you own, cause we're twins yes. and we grew up being compared, compared ridiculously. Like under a microscope, even the, the a mark on your face, is, yeah. they point it out. Jane doesn't have it. Were you born with it? Well, it's really like, oh, wow. Okay. So um, well, I don't remember where I was. Well, going. I'll go. go well, I'll go one, one area Thank on that you. was I was the lazy twin. Joan um, had more anxiety than me. So she would part of her anxiety. She would clean <laughs> and did. maybe even cook and stuff. And so things were getting done. Me, on the other hand, I could spend an, an entire hour walking around my apartment, you know. Yes, I took care of my son, but then after that, I didn't know how, I couldn't get myself motivated. And I was always comparing myself to, myself to others, and oh, I, the point. I yes. did not um, make the cut, let's say. Uh, comparing myself to others, I couldn't clean my apartment. So... It's a very dangerous thing when we overly compare ourselves to others because we feel badly about ourselves because or we're making fun of someone else. Oh, at least I'm not like as lazy as that one, you know, and that didn't help me, actually. So, so what we learned oh, was okay. you only compare yourself to yourself. So if I felt like I wanted to read, you know, a chapter in a book, I would read that chapter if I could get get through it. And then if I wanted to read the whole book, I would only compare it to myself. And I would say maybe tomorrow night, Joan, you can yes. read six pages or, you know, 10 or two chapters. And then don't ever be hard on yourself. Yes. We are all human beings. Yes. We're all trying to survive. And I would say tomorrow I am going to read more instead of say, oh, God, what a loser. Blah, 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 blah. Because I'm good at degrading myself. Yes, we all are. We all are. Especially when you compare yourself to another person because they're going to look like they do it better or because you can't. And I remember trying to be an avid reader. But I, I was much better at reading articles or uh, a very short story. But I loved movies. And it took me a long time. Now, remember, I'm, I'm still working on my grown-upness. I feel a little more awake because I was so depressed. But um, I liked movies. But for me, I thought, because remember, I was called the smart twin. It was so hard living up to smart when I was only, well, I was a little, I am smart. But I'm not those brilliant people that get into Yale and Harvard because I was called lazy. Remember, that included my homework. So what I do now, because I still have a little of that, is I don't set myself up for failure. So I'm going to say, for example, cleaning a bathroom. Mm -hmm. I think when you can clean your own home, pay your bills and stuff, partly you're like a grown up now, right? Yeah. So what I did, because I could never clean the whole bathroom at one time, I would fail. So instead, one day... I would say, I'm going to clean that sink and I'm not going to make myself clean the tub, shower or the toilet or the floor, et cetera. I'm not going to make myself do that today. Tomorrow's another day. And you would be amazed that sometimes two hours later, because you didn't set yourself up with that mountain to climb, that yeah. to do it all in 10 minutes, then I'm able to do a little bit more. You know, I, I'm famous for vacuuming half of my bedroom. I, I mean, I really am not that good at housework. 
And remember, we used to live in communities a little bit more human style, I want to say, mm -hmm. back in the days where if somebody wasn't good at shoveling the driveway, the other person might be really good or the kids in the neighborhood are going to help with that. Mm -hmm. And if you can only cook, but you're not good at cleaning, usually families were good at supporting each other. We were called mirror twins. <laughs> so when, when mirror twins are compared, because most of the time it's physical, but you know, we did. Yeah. So somebody was talking about mental health and they said, Oh, we think you're mirror twins. So when Jane said she thought she was lazy, I thought I was like a motor. And if somebody said Joan is funny, that's me, Jane felt that she didn't have a sense of humor. Don't ever, mm. ever take the opinion of somebody else if mm -hmm. they say something that you think you are and they say you are not. Well, one, you can strive to be that. Yes. And two, how do they know? No one really knows who you are. If you, you're you the know. one who you know how you feel or who you are. Other people try to place what they think mm -hmm. we are and they try to say, oh, well, Joan is this and Joan is that. Well, you don't even live with me. But it's because if Jane was one thing, they just assumed I, like Jane was smart. They thought I was ignorant or stupid. Right. And Joan was funny. So I was 37 years old having a mild argument with a human being who said, God, Jane, you're so funny. And I said, no, I am not. Yeah. You're mistaken. <laughs> and it was that I was 37. And I remember that was huge. Mm -hmm. And it, and I realized I am a little funny and I can be a little funny. And I'll tell you how to be a little funny. One quick tip. Oh, okay. stop taking life so seriously. Remember, the, there was a famous book, maybe you guys don't remember, we're older now, and it was called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, oh. which is simple but not easy. It takes practice it to be less anxious. Yes. It takes practice to hide a depression if you were having to do a report, like get up in front of a whole room. You know, you can, I did so many fake smiles, let's put it that way, until it some of it became second nature, which I think rounding this up, practice. Oh, that was it. That's what the actor said. Practice. You have to practice at being uh, happy. You have to practice at being, if you wanted to have a sad part, yes, you would have to practice. And all I say is when you practice, practice with an, another person, because when I would practice, I would say negative things about myself oh, unknowingly. Yes, yes, yes. And Jane would say, excuse me, what did you mean to say? Because even last week, I didn't think it was a bad thing that I did, but I called myself an idiot. And I thought, what are you doing, mm -hmm. Joan? Here you are telling everybody not to use mm -hmm. negative words about yourself. And I did. So James was helpful and said, what was it that you meant to say? Oh, gosh, we have a little, we're babysitting, we're babysitting a for dog. a little doggy and he, and his, Toto. And his name is Toto, like in The Wizard he of Oz. is a little bit, okay, he's on Jane now. Anyway, I think that um, we hope we answered some of the questions. Yeah, we hope. How's that? But we are willing to answer anything else. How many people do you think you've reached out with your podcast? I have no idea how many people watch these podcasts, but I know that we've been on nearly 60 of them. And uh, this is a great example of don't set yourself up for failure. Joan and I both know that we have a nickname for ourselves that we're like so sloths. Yeah, we should. I call it relaxing. <laughs> I am never going to be a marathon runner. I'm never going to be a type A personality running, trying to be a CEO of a company. I, I can't do it. I need more time <laughs> to yeah. relax, like I said. And so what we did was uh, so many people said, you've got to do your own podcast. You have to look at this. You guys are great. At do it. Well, we are not putting that. We're not motivated time. for that yeah. because we have so many other things we're interested in. And so that's the other thing is not everyone has to be the CEO. Not everyone has to be president. Not, you know, you could live the happiest people actually live simple lives. And that's my goal right now is I'd like to live a nice, simple yes. life. Yes. They said that the happiest people are usually living the simplest lives and that not everyone has to be some big important person. Mm-hmm.
Anybody want to riff off of that? How about you, Jeffrey? Um, I think that I think that if you're if you're just doing what you like to do, then I think you are living the simplest life. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for inviting us. We really appreciate that. Thank you.